Let's talk about listening to music, and right away I want to make a distinction between playing music and actually listening to it. There is a difference. Okay, so I realize that a good portion of my audience comes from a car audio background which, by nature, appeals to the exhibitionist more so than it does to the connoisseur. I know I keep bouncing back to the Connex scale, links down below, but it's a practical gradient for all the different things that we do with speakers, listening habits, etc. So while those on the connoisseur end of the spectrum tend to savor their music, those on the exhibitionist end see it as more of a stylistic backdrop, something to help communicate a particular identity or some affiliation. And if there's one drawback to this, it's that it puts many undue constraints on what passes for good music. Has there ever been a song that you really enjoyed listening to by yourself? One that you might not play in the company of others because maybe it doesn't align with your social image and you'd feel like you've been caught listening to something that's out of character? That is what I'm talking about. So much good music falls by the wayside when it is treated like a piece of formal attire in a fitting room, with its value decided by what it does for the appearance rather than the ear. Obviously, this does not apply to everyone, but I mentioned it as a common bottleneck in the pursuit of genuinely good music that's just for you. The kind of music that you're not inclined to justify to others because what they think. They're on the traffic side of the window while you're in your own private sound bubble. Incidentally, I want to encourage everyone who hasn't done so already to create a new playlist and begin populating it with the sort of guilty pleasure music we just discussed. You'll find that as the list grows, the guilty part simply falls away, and what you end up with is an honest-to-goodness collection of good music. I'm hoping that many of you are already there. If you're starting from scratch, the global network of discovery has some artificial intelligence to help you along. Even if you can only think of one artist who represents the kind of music you'd like to explore, just type that in and hit the button to generate a map of similar sounding artists. Super useful, and I'll post a link to that as well. Anyhow, that's my pitch. There is music that complements the social image, and then there is music that resonates on a chemical level with the brain's reward system. You play one, and you listen to the other. Again, this may not be a distinction to everyone, but if it is, it's certainly worth bearing in mind as you go to examine your playlist. How much of it is for personal listening? How much of it is for showboating? I've had a number of conversations with people in car audio who admit to a complete lack of interest in music. It's just something that an amplifier needs to make the woofers go. That and power. As long as it's of the expected genre and the baseline complements the frequency at which the sub peaks, it's good enough. Is it though? Over the years, I've noticed that many of the people who got into car audio as a way to draw attention to themselves had abandoned it just as abruptly and moved on to something else. Without a deep-seated passion for music, there is just no staying power, which is why I make the distinction between playing and listening to music, and hope that everyone considers the latter before the former has lost its appeal, which it may, eventually. So here's my advice. First, Invest in a decent set of headphones. Don't break the bank, you can get a set of monoprice retros for 30 bucks on Amazon, and you'd probably spend 10 times as much trying to get this kind of sound out of a set of speakers. Why headphones? They're private. Not only do they let you focus on whatever it is you're listening to, they're also the universal sign for others to leave you alone. Most of the time. Next, use a discovery tool like Music Roamer or Music Map to zero in on something that grabs and holds your undivided attention. I realize that this is entirely subjective, but my own journey has led me to a lot of IDM, ambient, and alternative electronic music. For what it's worth, here's a short list of my current favorites. So if our listening tastes are anything alike, perhaps a few of these can inspire some vivid mental imagery for you as they certainly have for me. I also find that there's a lot more creative expression in music without lyrics. More intricate patterns, transitions, chord progressions, and micro-edits throughout. With lyrics, if you really pay attention to the music beneath, it's usually just a simple pattern looped throughout the verse with a slight variation for the chorus. A lazy backdrop with some words over top like an internet meme. And if music is imagery, I prefer the kind that doesn't rely on captions to convey a mood, an emotion, or an atmosphere. Again, this is all very subjective, I don't expect everyone to agree, and you're not wrong if you don't. So, my final bit of advice is to store your media locally, in as high a resolution as you have room for. These days, some network-attached storage is the modern equivalent of a record shelf, and the extent to which you can catalog your music has never been greater. Aside from not having to worry about the limited bit rates of the various streaming services, licensing debacles, or paying a monthly bill just to maintain access, owning your music outright gives you full control over the format, tags, replay gain, and many other properties that define a well-organized collection. So, 
that's my two cents on listening to music. I hope you got something out of it. Hit that like button for more. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. We'll be talking about aperiodic loading. Cheers.